Question one, the diagram above shows the graph of f of x equals x minus five. Write down an expression for f of x plus four. So remember what that means? f of x plus four, we are substituting wherever you see x, you are replacing it with x plus four. So this x is best practice wherever you make a substitution, you use a bracket. But in this case, the use of a bracket is not really necessary, it's just x plus four minus five, four minus five is minus one. So we have x minus one there. Sketch the graph of f of x plus four. So they're asking us to sketch the line y equals x minus one. Now to sketch that, there's two ways we can do it. In fact, we could think of it as what is the transformation? Now it looks like part C, but we can say an informal transformation here. Now f of x plus four, you could do the table as well if you want, but f of x plus four, is going to shift the graph to the left by four. So this point here at five is going to shift all the way back, yeah, by four units to one. The other thing though that you might wanna, well, that we definitely want to write down is where does it cross the y-axis? Well, we know that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. The last number tells you where it crosses the y-axis. So in this case, you know, taking this graph back by four, it's gonna cross the x-axis at one and the y-axis at minus one. And then you just draw a line straight through. So it's gonna look something like that. Now for part C, for descriptions of shifts, you can't say shift. Yeah, that's the informal way. It's a translation. And any object that is moving left, right, up or down is by a vector. So by the vector, now, when we're moving to the left by four, remember we write a column. The top number represents the x-axis because we're going four to the left, that's the negative direction. So you say minus four, and then we are not moving in the y-axis, so we would say zero for that. Describe the transformation from f of x two, the first one being f of x minus three. So remember, that's a translation, yeah? So we're moving three to the right, but we can't say that. So we're saying it's a translation by the vector, yeah, now we're going three to the right, that is in the positive direction, so the top number represents movement in the x-axis, we're saying three to the right, and no movement on the y-axis. For f of x, that is not inside the bracket, so it's affecting the y values, so anything that happens to the y values, it does as it says, so we're multiplying them by four. Any graph that we are multiplying by four, it's a stretch, so we're gonna say stretch, in the y-axis by a scale factor of four. Now, f of half x, now that's within the bracket, that's affecting the inputs. So remember, we do the opposite. So instead of halving the x values, we're doubling the x values. So it's a stretch in the x-axis this time by a scale factor of two. Yeah, so instead of halving, we're doubling. D minus f of x, so the negative outside the f is multiplying all the y values by minus one. So if you have y values at the positive side above the x-axis and you multiply by minus one, they're gonna come below. So it's a reflection in the x-axis. So it's a reflection in the x-axis. Then the final one, here we have two transformations. Now the reason we're practicing this is because of our discussions of completing the square and quadratics. So f of x minus one is gonna shift one to the right. The plus two is affecting the y values, it's gonna move two up. So it's strictly shifting left, right, up and down, right? So this is a translation again. So it's a translation by the vector. Now this time, we have numbers in both the x and the y. We're moving one to the right, so we're positive x, and we're moving up by two, so it's positive two. And these are the transformations for part two. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you wanna learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Sketch the graph of the above equation. So, factorizing. So we have x, x now for 20, 10 and two for this one. So we have x plus 10, x minus two, make that equal zero. So either x plus 10 equals zero, move the 10 over, so you would get x equals minus 10. 
or x minus 2 equals 0, move the minus 2 over, you'd get x equals 2. So those are your roots. Then the y-intercept, looking at what's independent of x is the minus 20. So it'll be 0 minus 20. So we can do our little sketch. Minus 10 and 2. So it's going to look something like this. And it crosses the y-axis at minus 20. Find the coordinates of the turning point. So completing the square, we half that coefficient of x. So it'll be x plus 4 squared. Subtract the number squared. So 4 squared is 16 minus 20. So y equals x plus 4 squared minus 16 minus 20 is minus 36. So the x plus 4 squared is going to take your graph and move it to the left by 4. So your turning point will be at minus 4. Yeah, you're taking the x squared graph, you're going to the left by 4. Then the minus 36 brings it down. So it'll be at minus 36 like that. And then write down the equation of the line of symmetry. Yeah, we look at the turning point. What's this x value? That will tell you what the vertical line is. It's at x equals minus 4. The graph above shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals a plus b cos kx. x is between 0 and 180. Use the graph to find the value of k. Now the way we do this is we think about the original cosine graph. Now the original cosine graph goes from 0 to 360. So from peak to peak, it's 360 degrees in width, right? Now here, if you look at peak to peak, it goes from 0 to 120. So from 360 to 120, yeah, you can even look between the, the bottom numbers, between 60 and 180 is also 120. So the graph has been compressed by a scale factor of 3. So remember, cos kx, the coefficient of x, tells you what you're doing to the x-axis. Now, because you are dividing those values by 3, it would be cos 3x. Yeah, so the kind of idea here is if you had f of x is cos x for the graph that I drew, then f of 3x would be wherever you see x, you replace it with 3x, it will become cos 3x. Then we know f of 3x does the opposite. So instead of times in the x values by 3, you're dividing them by 3. So in this case, k is 3.